Welcome back to the Capital Runway Podcast, special holiday edition. I'm Amanda. And I'm Charles. And welcome to the Capital Runway Podcast. How are you doing, Charles? I'm doing great. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Can you believe the year is coming to an end? I cannot. It has been a very busy year for us. Yes, yes, yes. What do you got planned for the uh, remainder of the remainder of the year you know i'm taking some time mm-hmm. just hanging out with family um relaxing just yeah. are you gonna be in town the holiday um i will be in new jersey okay all right yeah all right yeah i'll, I'll be here with family uh but definitely looking forward to eating well mm-hmm. uh watching some football and basketball games with yeah. the family and just just kind of taking it easy just kind of you know, unplugging a little bit absolutely, uh, and getting ready for 2024. Can you believe that? Oh, my goodness. 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Before we talk about 2024, let's talk about all of the things that we did in 2023. That's a long list, Amanda. <laughs> That's a long list. Yeah. What what uh, what are some of your highlights from 2023? Wow. There's so many. Um, well, you know, I, I have to start. Uh, I'm really excited that we actually launched the Capital Runway podcast and we are on our ninth episode. Can you I believe know. that? I know. So cool. You know, it's something we had talked about doing for so long. Yeah. So the fact that we finally got it off the ground, yes, no pun yes. intended, <laughs> is really great. Yeah. And all the things that we do, and, and, and we're excited about all the folks that tune into the podcast Absolutely. and listen to us each and every month. Mm-hmm. Um, I even understand we have uh, listeners overseas. We do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. So as far as where? Uh. Well, shout out to Japan. Yes. <laughs> My dad is an active listener over there, so that's fun. Yeah, so he, he's uh, he's building our, our listenership out there. So Our international. Yeah. <laughs> international. We have other countries too, but Japan is number two. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that been definitely one of the highlights, and I'm sure there are many more that you can share as well. Yeah. You know, for, for me, uh, it's just been so fun to watch passengers come back to the mm-hmm. airport, you know, after we had a few... Rough years yeah, there. I think yeah. we can all agree. It's just been great seeing both passengers and airlines come back. Yes. You know, uh, we had eight new airlines wow. join us at Dulles this year, including Norse mm-hmm. and Eta and Play, Okay, uh, which is really great. I think um, it's, you know, between DCA and Dulles, we had 18 new routes yeah. launched. Yeah. So over at DCA, we had Cedar Rapids. We added... Uh, we brought back Fort Lauderdale, and I believe we have Wichita launching in January. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that will be really exciting. People can spend weekends in Wichita if yeah. they want. And, and it's funny. I was talking to my wife uh, uh, last week in the car. She's like, yeah, you know, there's this new airline called Play Airlines that flies to Iceland. We should really <laughs> think about it. I was like, yeah, I know. She's like, well, how'd you know? I was like, I did a podcast on it. Nonstop, <laughs> nonstop. On a bright, big, beautiful red plane. Yes. I love seeing that plane. Yes, it's so yes. pretty. So we're, we're looking at uh, possibly making that trip in, in February. So we'll see. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, Can so. you see the Northern Lights there in February? Uh, I don't know. But uh, I, I just think we want to find somewhere to go. It's so. a bucket list item yeah. for me, yeah. seeing the Northern Lights. Yeah. Other big things that happened over at Dulles, we launched the new Capital One Lounge. Yeah, that was a cool lounge. I don't know. Have you gotten a chance to go inside? I did. I was uh, I was there for the grand opening. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Really good food items. Yes. Too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Eclectic mix of food. I like yeah. really like how they really incorporated the Aero Serenade mm-hmm. architecture and vibe into it. So it all really fits seamlessly into the airport's yeah. design. Um, I know Capital One is really intentional about their designs, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. especially in their lounges and at other airports. So it was really cool to see that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So um, definitely excited about that addition to the airport. Yeah. And then over at DCA, we opened PF Chang's. My favorite, <laughs> yes, my favorite. We uh, as a team, we we go there at least once a month. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah. 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 People love PF Chang's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what's not to love? Yeah, but it's a, it's a great location. Um, just plenty of seating, uh, and the service is great. So. Yeah, and it's right in the our new newest mm-hmm. concourse, yeah. and so it really looks out at all that big, beautiful open space. We also introduced walkout technology with okay. uh, the goods over at DCA. Yes, so yes, you can yes. just kind of scan yeah, your hand yeah. and then you can grab and go. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's a cool store. I yeah. haven't get, I haven't had an opportunity to try it yet, but I'm yeah. very curious. And you know they sell books too? Really? Yeah, they, they sell books. Is it? It's ma- They sell mahogany books, correct? Yes, yes, yeah, they have a partnership yeah, with them. Yeah, That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, so it, Mahogany Books is a local 
black owned business actually started here in the District of Columbia. Oh, wow. Um, they've ex- since expanded and now their new location here is here at the airport. That's awesome. So it's a great stop. If, if you're here at the airport, definitely check it out. Yeah, for sure. One of the uh, many other things that we are excited about. We um, So yeah, there was a lot of blank wall space in the airports. And we decided to be creative and created an, a youth art walk. Oh, yeah. Where we actually are showcasing artwork from area high school students um, on the walls here at, at DCA or IAD. Um, and it's great to... When you see passengers, you know, walk through the halls and they stop and they take pictures with their phones, it's like, yeah, you know, that was a great impact um, to see the not only the students but their parents, uh, their principals and administrators, um, and to get TV coverage was it was a great event that we had helped. Is this artwork going to rotate out? Yeah, so we're um, we're planning on uh, rotating the artwork out. Uh, next month, actually, in okay. preparation for Black History Month. Oh, very yeah, cool. Yeah, so uh, we're really excited about that. So we're going to have another big, big event uh, where the parents and the students and teachers can come and um, and just celebrate, you know, the students' achievements. Um, it's a great experience, so we look forward to it. And where can passengers find these art walks? Yeah, at DCA, it's between Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. Okay. Um, it's a long walkway, um, but as soon as you, you can't miss it. Um, when, once you're walking from the historic terminal to the new one, uh, you'll definitely run into it. Okay. And then at IED, it's in the main terminal as well. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. What else? What else? You know, another great feel-good event that we um, that we hosted last year, uh, we held a workforce development expo. Okay. Um, again, for area high school students, because we understood that not – you know, when folks graduate from high school, not everyone wants to go to college, mm. but they can still start a successful career here at the airport. And we had um, over 120 high school students from both D.C. Uh, and Virginia uh, come to the airport and learn about careers available to them at the airport. So they were able to talk to the firefighters, the police officers, um, the maintenance uh, professionals here at the airport, and just learn about all the different aspects um, on how they can start their career here at the airport. So it was another great event. Um, again, got a lot of great TV coverage. And it, and you know it's great when the students, when they at the end of the day, they all say, thank you, this was great. They really yeah. appreciate it. So. Impressing teenagers is a big accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, spending all day with them is a big ac- accomplishment as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what else? I can't forget all the supplier diversity events that we've, we've mm-hmm. held. Um, when most folks think at the airport, they just think about this is where I, I buy a plane ticket, rent a car, and get on a plane and go to my destination. Yep. But uh, the airport is a big business, and there are a lot of procurement opportunities available to small businesses to take advantage of the airport. And we held, I believe, over 14 uh, supplier diversity events at the airport. Wow. Um, where small businesses from the area could come in and learn about the procurement opportunities available to them. Um, and, of course, we're building a big terminal uh, at Dulles Airport, mm-hmm. um, and so we we hosted a number of events with uh, Turner Construction to kind of talk to small businesses about opportunities available. Wow! Yeah, I know that people are really looking forward to seeing that new concourse. Over yeah, at Dulles. yeah, yeah. It's going to be a great addition to the airport. There's another airport wide accomplishment. Uh, we published a CSR report. Oh yeah, corporate social responsibility report, mm-hmm. um, and it kind of highlights all the achievements. It highlights all the work that we've done. Um, So you can find it on our website. um, And we're we're looking forward to the next year's report as well. Yeah, this is a, it's a huge report that takes a lot of time and effort and um, from everybody at the authority. So it's always really great to look through. Yeah, and and this last year's report was 98 pages. Wow. Uh, So if you want good reading, get a long (laughs) flight, you can take a look. But we also have a shortened version. Yeah. If you want a quick reading, quick highlights. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What else can we talk about? Let's talk about 2024. Yes. We did so much in 2023, but we have so much more planned for 2024. Specifically, DCA reimagined. So we're mm-hmm. going to get some new soft seating over at the airport and then also some new bathrooms, yes. which, you know, is exciting. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves a pretty bathroom. <laughs> I don't know. When you walk into a bathroom, you're like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. this is nice. Yeah, I've seen the new ones that we already have, and it's like, wow, this is this is an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then as far as new airlines coming, we have Aeromexico joining mm-hmm. us and Swiss over yes. at Dulles. 
super excited for both of those options. Mm -hmm. And did you talk about the new American Express Lounge? Coming? Yes, that is also coming. I think that has been long awaited. Yes. So people are thrilled. We can't wait to get that open. Now, now where is that going to be located? Do you know? It's going to be on the south end of National Hall. Okay. Um, it's post security and it will be accessible kind of near the B gates, I believe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is really exciting. And I know we got a couple of new restaurants coming. Yes. Yeah. I love restaurant options. So. Oh, my goodness. Me, yeah. too. At DCA, we have Atlas Brew Works, mm -hmm. uh, Zeke's Coffee, Compass Coffee. We have a new taco place called Dos Toros Taqueria, yeah. Half Moon Empanadas, and a second Cava Meza Grill because the first one is so popular. Yeah. Now, you, you have to refresh my memory, but I was walking through the terminal the other day, and I saw... There's a new hamburger place coming. Lucky Buns. Yes, yes, yes. I keep hearing about this Lucky Buns. I love Lucky Buns. They have a shop over in Union Market, and it's really good. Yeah, I heard it's um, I heard it's something definitely something to look forward to. So yeah, it'll be on my my lunch list. <laughs> uh, our team has already been talking about it, so once it opens, we'll be there. Yeah, over at Dulles, we have Sfoglina mm -hmm. Restaurant and Rappahannock Oyster Company. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a new Potbelly, a Gatsby, which yeah. is um a fun restaurant over in the navy yard uh we have auntie ann's coming and a grab and go from union kitchen yep sandwiches and pretzels yeah. can't go wrong with either one of those and also at dulles this year already opened that we opened up a cava and okay. a rusty taco yes so both of those options are delicious awesome so i know our passengers are really enjoying that yes so many new options mm -hmm. love it so you want to talk about the podcast like what was your favorite moment or favorite episode my favorite episode, that's a really good question. My favorite episode, I think, well, I loved all of the episodes. Yes. Of course. Um, but I really enjoyed when we talked to Janine Shaw mm -hmm. over at Dulles Ops, one of the duty managers out there. She is just, she has so much information yeah. and such great experience. Mm -hmm. And my favorite moment was when she talked about her favorite moments or her, her happy spot, I mm -hmm. guess, happy mm -hmm. place. And that's when she's driving out on the airfield. But to get into a car and just drive around the runways, the taxiways, mm -hmm. and get up close to that aircraft that has arrived and see um, the airlines operating or the different facets of the airport is probably my other, you know, happy place. Um, it's, it's kind of exciting when you're out there. I also find that to be the coolest part of the job. <laughs> I love being able to get in the car with the uh, drivers. I do not drive on the airport. <laughs> I love just driving around and seeing all the planes yeah. up close, you know, whether you're going to watch some planes take off mm -hmm. or land, or if you're lucky enough to be in the car that drives behind the A380 yeah, as it yeah. takes off, you know, that is, they're just, it's such a cool opportunity that not many people get. And it really makes you think, this is a cool place to be. Yeah, you really don't realize how big the runways are yeah. until you're out there. Yeah. Um, and he's like, "Wow, this is this is this airport is huge." Yeah. Not only that, you don't realize how big some of the airplanes are. Mm -hmm. You know, once you're in the airplane, and all they all kind of feel the same. Yeah. yeah. But when you see some of them next to others, <laughs> you're like, "Oh, that plane is much smaller than this other plane." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was really cool to kind of see them land and take off in person up, up close absolutely um, it's a totally different experience yeah. yeah one thing we did this year uh is that we re we brought back our avgeek tours mm -hmm. and those are opportunities for the public to join us at the airport for a special tour of the airport and the airfield we take them around to a bunch of different places including the fire station the aerotrain maintenance facility airport operations and then we also try and take them out to the airfield where they can get an opportunity to watch planes take off and land for a few minutes so that's a really fun part of the summer that we do now if somebody's listening and wants to participate in the tour next year how, how do they find out so the best way is to follow us on social mm -hmm. so it's dulles underscore airport okay um and that's where we announce most of our avgeek tours mm -hmm. we will give you people a little bit of a heads up but we do have very limited space okay. so you know it's really first come first serve and yeah. they sell out quite quickly it's a free event but we do have it's a ticketed event okay all right great what are some of your favorite moments from this year, Charles? So I actually have two. One of the conversations I really enjoyed was uh, Scott Cooper. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
hearing him talk about all that goes into bring in an airline to the airport mm-hmm. uh most folks just think the airline the, the airplane just shows up yeah uh but there's so much more to to that conversation before you can actually buy your ticket mm-hmm. but we actually make it fun we actually take the excel data that we get from various sources and put it into powerpoints and we actually tell a story to airlines on why they should be flying to dulles and i think you know that does take time to build we actually work on those business cases for meetings with network planners at their at the headquarter locations as well as with these routes conferences that are throughout the year so i think you know my sort of day in the life if you will is a lot of reading and a lot of researching and a lot of building presentations and pitches to eventually give these airlines yeah you yeah. could just hear the enthusiasm in his voice mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. what he does and his passion for aviation yeah. and airlines so that was a really fun conversation yeah and then um and the other one was this Robin Wade, uh, labor relations, and her talking about the apprenticeship program mm-hmm. and actually having uh, the apprentices actually come in and, and tell their story. Uh, hello, I'm Gregory Halstead. I'm a carpenter apprentice, and I'm coming up on my end of my first year, August 1st. Jonathan here is actually a friend of mine from high school. We went to the same high school together, and he was in it, so he actually told me about it and when they had openings up, so that's how I found out. My name is Jonathan Vieira. I'm part of the exterior electric shop, and I am entering my third year of apprenticeship. Well, I, found, I discovered uh, the apprenticeship program through community college. I was going at Prince George's Community College at the time when my coordinator uh, introduced the, the program to me, and I was very interested. At that time, I didn't have uh, the experience. I just had started the courses in Electrical One, and it was, I thought it was a great opportunity to actually join the apprenticeship program. And I saw everything it had to offer, and, and I took my, my chance. And, and, you know, we're here. We're, like, have a successful careers here at the airport. Yeah. Uh, learning the trades um, on how to make the airport run. Yeah. You know, something that Jack talked about in our very first episode was how airports are really like little cities. Mm-hmm. And they... They require, you know, there are so much in that goes on behind the yeah, scenes yeah. and different people doing different jobs and mm-hmm. it all has to work together. And that is so true in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. A thing that shocks people is when you say, we have 25,000 people who work at our airports. Hmm. And they don't think of 25,000 people. That's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. What's their roles? How does this thing operate? And when you think about how complex the team is, to run an aviation business, it's certainly it's our 1,700 workers, but it's also the thousands of folks who work for the federal government, whether that's in customs or work with TSA, whether it's you know the baggage handlers, the custodians, you know the bus drivers. It takes an army to really pull this thing off, and it takes people working for different entities but acting as one team to pull it off. Because unless you work as one team. It won't be a seamless experience for a customer. It won't be a good experience for a customer. So I think that's the thing that kind of surprises them. There's no one entity that runs an airport. It's multiple entities that do it. It's very, very complex. And there's a bevy of activity that happens below the surface. Mm -hmm. And it's this group of people that make that experience a good one. Yeah. Even people who don't work necessarily at the airport, mm-hmm. you know, like they're working over here at CHQ. Everyone yeah. has an important job to play and role to play just to make sure that those planes take off. Yeah. But, you know, the, the great thing about these podcasts is that when you're when we're talking to our guests, you can tell they really love what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's airport operations, whether it's uh, an apprentice or whether it's a concessionaire, mm-hmm. uh, everybody is really passionate about what they do mm-hmm. and uh, they're excited to tell their story to maybe inspire somebody else. Absolutely. And how lucky are we that we get to yeah. have these people on and talk to them? Yeah. I think that's a great part of yep. our job. Yep. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, until next time, thank you all for listening to the Capital Runway. We also want to give a special shout out to our behind the scenes man, yes. Ryan. He's yes. always there editing and listening and he does such a great job for us. So we just want to give you a special thanks. Ryan. Yeah, he makes us sound good. He really does. <laughs> Are you sure? Because I felt like I repeated myself a couple no, of times. No, no. Was it? It does no. get edited. Yeah. So good. <laughs> so what attracted you to aviation business? See? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so you're one of the first 
president. <laughs> I've already forgotten. You're one of the first elected. elected. You're one of the first elected Latinos in the state of Virginia. So what's going on? New, what's new? Oh, see, it's so what's going oh, on? Oh, did I give my title? They should have self checkout. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is it? What's going on here? Okay, so what actually is? Did, did you hear that, Ben? Okay. What do we have going on for 2024? Oh, so much. Um, but I don't think we're done with 2023 yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, Let's we're um, talking about 2020. Yeah, we have definitely had our fair share of bloopers yes, on we this have. podcast. <laughs> well, with that, that is a wrap for us. Yeah. We want to wish you all. Very happy holiday and restful holiday. Yes, and we'll see you in 2024. See you then. Yeah, looking forward to a great year.